My name is Lisa Keith Lucas, and I'm the volunteer archivist here at the Camp Gordon Johnson World War II Museum. Okay, you want to show us around? I'd be happy to. All right. Uh, the museum began um, in 1997, and with uh, four artifacts, they didn't know they were forming a museum. Um, so it started out as a glass case in a business and went to a room and then a building and then a bigger building. <laughs> That's awesome. And now we are here. Okay. Uh, and this is a very, very appropriate location. If you want to step outside, I'll explain. Okay, why. sure. You look out over the bay there, you can see land right over there. That is Dog Island and land right over there, which is the eastern side of St. George Island. And these are the beaches that they did uh, practice amphibious landings on. Now, not only can we see that, but they did a very special practice landing on the beach that is right across the street with the 4th Infantry Division. Oh, nice. And some of our very best photographs and film were taken right there because it was a special thing with the brass here and they had filmographers and that kind of thing. So now... When visitors come and they see all our beautiful photographs, they say, where was this taken? And we can take them outside and go, right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So it is very nice. Um, uh, the whole purpose of this camp was to train infantry divisions, entire infantry divisions, in amphibious landings. And in 1942, they decided the only way they could do that was to actually do it. So they brought infantry division here, put them in landing craft, took them out offshore, and then landed them in all kinds of conditions to make sure they could get them, their equipment, their vehicles, their ammunition, everything on the beaches, uh, just to show that they could do it. And so that is where all that training took place all those years ago. Nice. Pretty cool. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so we really like this location and oh, don't sure. intend to move again. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> well, let's go back inside. Okay. No? really three missions. One is to research and preserve the history of Camp Gordon Johnson, which was here in Carabell from 1942 to 1946. Second, to acknowledge the entire World War and to teach as much of that to new generations. Uh, so our uh, collection and our exhibits do go way beyond just Camp Gordon Johnston and U.S. Army and amphibious landings. And third, we are the county's war museum. So we cover county's service in wars going all the way back to the Spanish-American War and all the way to the present where we can and what we know. So we do have a Gold Star War wall for our Franklin County residents who gave their lives wow. uh, in war. Um, so those three missions then shape uh, our museum. But of course, what else shapes our museum is what happens to get donated. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> so whenever we get a donation, and particularly if it's a personal donation, and I'm going to show you one in a second, um, we take that and use that to tell a larger story. And uh, some of the donations are extremely significant for our researching the history of this place. And some of them may not have anything related to Camp Gordon Johnson, but they may be a local person who served in the war, and their story can be told in the larger context. Here is an example of one of those that gives us the chance to really understand the history of Camp Gordon Johnston. A few years ago, the daughters of the commander of an amphibious truck company uh, donated his paperwork. And you think paperwork's you know, kind of boring, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> this was the 818th Amphibious Truck Company, an all-black company. And, of course, back then, an all-black company would have white officers. And the man, of course, was the officer. Um, but we did not have any names of any of the men in this company until his paperwork. Oh, wow. And now we have over 100 names with service numbers and some history. We know that they were at Utah Beach on D-Day, which we did not know before. Right. And uh, we know that five of his men received um, or were awarded uh, bronze stars for their actions on June 6, 1944, and his men also drove for the Red Ball Express. All of that came from a stack of paperwork. Paperwork. 
you know, <laughs> That's so nice. that was really exciting. <laughs> so we are able to tell their story, and since then we've found partial rosters for Mark, three other time. amphibious truck companies that trained what? here, all black and uh, been able to trace some of their history too. But that's an ongoing thing, and so right. we're working on that. Right. Can you come around here? Here is the other example. This is a display about Kenneth Tucker, who was a man who was uh, born in East Point and raised in East Point in Carabelle. He went to high school in Carabelle. Kenneth Tucker was a tail gunner in a B-17 in the 15th Air Force, which was stationed in Italy. Well. This allows us to tell the story about the 15th Air Force, which is often called the Forgotten 15th. It doesn't get quite as much exposure as the 8th Air Force. Um, so we have his effects and the book that he wrote uh, and with the help of his daughter and um, his medals and the like. And we can use that then to still tell a larger story. Right. And it turns out that we had a man in the 15th Air Force, Robert Brown, who never came home, and so we can bring attention to his story when we talk about the 15th Air Force. So that's nice. Kind of cool. mm -hmm. um, the uh, Camp Gordon Johnson aspect of it, um, we want to portray what the camp was like and who was here, and there were a lot, a quarter of a million troops trained here. One of the ways we do that is a mock-up of a barracks. And... Um, a lot of the furniture in here, the footlocker, the coal and the coal stove, the bunks, the tall locker, the screen doors, and the window are all from barracks that were at Camp Gordon Johnston during wow. the war. I see the pack of camels. That's what my dad smoked. <laughs> <laughs> so, and yes, they did have sand floors. It was a pretty awful place. So we have lots of things from the original camp that are donated by people over the years that help us tell the story about what life was like, the, not only for the troops, but the men who were here training, and then, of course, the civilian workers, and they had a lot of civilian workers um, here. And so, um, uh, you know, just four years, but lots and lots of cool history to uh, yes, definitely. cover. And George Cook is wonderful because not only was he here, and then he went to Japan, but he was a pack rat. <laughs> his wife, and this is her picture here, um, probably wanted to wring his neck because he kept everything. But for a museum, this was fantastic because right. we have some of the most wonderful mundane things here. We um, had a lot of prisoners of war here, like so many places all across the United States. There was a half a million German and Italian prisoners of war. And Florida was a good place to send POWs because they could work the farms and, and the lumber yards. So um, we didn't really know very much. We have a few names of some of the POWs and we have one who was quite famous to the people here. But uh, this past summer, I received a donation of information, again, paperwork, from a woman whose father was in the uh, military police detachment that was in charge of the POW. So, so now all of a sudden we have paperwork and photographs of that part of the camp that we did not know. People continue to find debris. Uh, if they do um, a house renovation or break new ground in Lanark, sometimes they bring us canteens and forks and mess kits and um, and it's still out there. They'll probably be finding things for years and years. Oh, I'm sure. Ordnance, we hope. Nobody finds any more of that, but we, of course, um, tell people, don't touch anything. If you find it, uh, call the uh, Sheriff's Department, and they will send a team from the Air Force Base to neutralize whatever it is. So that is the, the part of the museum that covers Camp Gordon Johnston. We all live on time we borrow, time our children to us lend. Yeah, today, but gone tomorrow, like a spark fly in the wind. We all look up to our fathers, all our lives if all is right, and we are.